We are back at St. Louis number three for our second story here. There will be more. And this is a story about a very famous photographer here back in the day, back in the day when the roaring 20s and 30s and all of these things were happening here, the crazy bohemian lifestyle, the artists, the writers, and if you go to a place in town that was called Storyville, very interesting place, that's where the, well, it was the red light district. So we're gonna talk about a photographer, his name was Ernest Belloc, and he was tied into that whole era. In fact, he was a very important player because, well, I'll tell you the story. Let's take a walk and look at some more vaults. Very interesting. So yeah, he came from a wealthy family here, Creole. And he got involved in photography at a very young age. He was taking pictures for more industry, industrial type of pictures, like for ships and, oh, machine parts, you name it. He was actually working for companies. And he started doing really well, but he started drifting into some other areas. And he started taking personal photographs of the hidden side of life here. Yes, the red light district. And I wonder how he ended up over there, right? He really got into it. I mean, he, he went not most notably to the places like the opium dens, Chinatown. And of course, as I mentioned, Storyville, he would get right in there and he would, they would let him take pictures. And he got many, many, many. The red light district here was from about 1897 to 1917. And interestingly, it was established by an ordinance. It was legal. They wanted to regulate prostitution. And what do you think the alderman's name was? Sidney Story. So he gets all the uh, he gets the the credit, I guess. Now, what's interesting is they had this blue book, and it's kind of like the I, it's kind of like the telephone book, where you can, you know, get the get the blue book and then kind of pick out who you want by address, or by name, or you could kind of pick by race, or special markings or other type of traits. So yeah, they, <laughs> it was, it was kind of like the yellow pages for prostitutes called the blue book. And there are some notable characters. Actually at Metairie, I remember there was one there that I was searching for. And I think I had that in my, my episode there. But anyway, yeah. They could also be, of course, by race, black, white, Jewish, French. Now, Ernest was something of what they describe in the day as a dandy. You know, you ever heard that term, the dandy? Dressed to the hilt, but sometimes they didn't quite have the money to back that up. It was more an image. That's a dandy. He lived alone for most of the latter part of his life, and he did have that reputation of being that dandy, that eccentricity. And he's also not a friendly guy. He's kind of arrogant. Now, all these photographs he had, which are, you know, the most interesting part, the prostitutes, are of women and some are nude, some were dressed. 
and others in mysterious poses. Now sadly, very sadly, he destroyed, either he or his brother destroyed these images. I think only, it was 89 images are left. And they think, well, his brother was a Jesuit priest who died after him. And they say that, of course, he inherited all these, all the images. And he, oh, you know, the pious priest, and he destroyed them. But a lot of people say that because of the markings, and they think that the, the images were ruined during the wedding process, developing process. So it's hard to say. But only 89 images left, and they are very intriguing images. He died on October 3rd, 1949. And as many of the crypts here, the, the way you'll see several names, like his crypt here, and he's on the bottom, the bottom name. They're all in here. And then the bones after a year and a day, or maybe longer if it's a smaller family. When the next one comes, they'll push them back, the bones. Because in the summer here, it gets like 100 in the humidity. And these things literally cook like an oven. We talked about it all in the Metairie, actually in the Metairie episode I did two years ago. So this has a marble cover we have marble steps everything else is made of cement but it's in reasonably good shape McCarthy slash Balak so we have what do we have with the top Paul, is it P and then Paul? We have uh, Balak. So we have a, a couple of different families here. McCarthy and Balak, interesting. So yeah, I'm gonna do another one here. At least three. But this man left quite a legacy. He's, these are the only surviving images that can give you the feel and not only of the women, but the interiors and the places, the Storyville. The, these images are makes make Storyville still come alive. So it's amazing, amazing. It's too bad the others didn't survive. It would be amazing to see all of his images, but that's how it is. All right, we're gonna do another one here. It's a beautiful place. Rest in peace to the McCarthy Blocks.